welcome to Spinafel. What's up, y'all? It's Jonathan Rollins. And Skiff Musara. Two Americans living in Sweden, talking about football. <laughs> yes. Welcome yes, back, two, Kevin. <laughs> two Americans living in Sweden talking like <laughs> idiots. Why? You know, it's funny. I feel like it's funny that you do that because it's like, I feel like there are still people who, like, you know, these motherfuckers don't talk like that in real no, life. Man. Like, what do you, what do you, I get it. Oh, I'll take a wa- <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, I'll take a lemon water, please, at the waiter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's very, yeah. Um, it's funny that the concept, of the broadcast voice yeah. p- persists despite In the fact that age. there's so yeah. many people out there who who aren't doing it you know what i mean mm-hmm. like yeah. like and i guess they're like well that's what the color commentator is for you know yeah. what i mean and it's like <laughs> the racist <laughs> yes <clears throat> we want the it went from like yes we'll hire a colored com no wait not colored just color <laughs> Right? Doesn't that feel weird? Yeah, uh, I think it's it's so it's so fake. Like we are, we know, we know now. The I jig's feel like up. We're be- we're beyond this. Like we yeah. don't have to do this anymore. I know you don't talk like that. If you get in an argument, you get your fucking hands off of me. Yeah, <laughs> unhand me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll punch stupid. you in your face, you little <clears throat> bitch. <laughs> Back to you. Uh, it's also why there's only there's really only one, and I'm. I, people are going to be annoyed with me because I can't remember his name, but there's only one Swedish sports announcer that I like. Mm. Uh, And I say it every time I'm like, ah, that's the one I like. And then my, somebody says, oh yeah, that's so-and-so. And And I'm like, yeah, but I never remember his name, but he's the one who's like, he, he get he's got real gravelly voice. Like every time something goes like, (laughs) but you can tell he's like, it's like, so not a broadcast voice. And it's very un-Swedish to me. He sounds like a guy that you would meet like at the bar watching the game. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like I, I'm like that guy, that guy gets yeah. it. He's the only one That's in Sweden you, yeah. who I feel like really gets it. Yeah. Um, I, th- I mean, I think exactly in general, I mean, I like the broadcast coverage. I do like it, but uh, ju- mm. it's just the voice. That's ridiculous. It's so unnecessary at this point. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah, we got all this other stuff. We got Tony Romo's and Greg Olson's in the studio and used to have a keep to leave. They give such a different perspective on yeah. it. Why do we keep this old timey voice? Yeah. In a way, yeah. I, yeah. And also, like, I also I think the Manning cast has proved that it's no mm-hmm. longer relevant to talk like that That's too. You great. know what I mean? Because yeah. I mean, there you have just like two normal guys who are just having Brothers. a conversation. You know, they're just goofing off and talking mm-hmm. about football. Like I in a way, I kind of hope that that is sort of the future of of broadcasting. Yeah, man. Bill Simmons uh, called it, man. Chilling, yeah. watching with the players is the best. I think that's what people want to see. Yeah. We've seen um, all that other shit before. We've seen people. And you can hear them trying to get their perfect call every time. It's <clears> annoying. <throat> Especially Gus It is Johnson, annoying. My least favorite. Mm. Oh, shit. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Gus Johnson with the, it's a punt. It's like <laughs> a booming punt. Did you see bounds, the hang time? <laughs> out of bounds at the 11. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. Uh, I assume you had a successful Christmas. Your children were oh, happy. Yeah, and, man. And th- kids, were, kids were loving it. They're, they're old enough to understand it now. They're all in. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, it was great. Great Christmas, and we do the seafood thing because we everybody's tired of Yule board. We've already had a mm. bunch by Christmas, mm. so on Christmas Eve, mm. which for those of you not in Sweden, they celebrate on Christmas Eve. Uh, mm. On Christmas Eve, we do the seafood platter with the nice. family, where everybody gets they order up the lobsters, get our lobsters mm. and our shrimp, and this time they had like this mussel. My mother in law made a nice like a. Uh, dish with like mussel and sweet potatoes and some spinach or something like that it was like whoa mm-hmm. wow almost like an appetizer wow on each pl- each little plate i was like okay <laughs> my law look at my law <laughs> wow yeah so it was nice we have so we always have the regular christmas table thing uh because we managed to avoid it up until christmas day 
Oh, we do it with that family earlier in the year. So, oh, right, you do it early. So, but the one thing that has made it onto the Christmas table, actually, two things now that have made it onto the Christmas table from the from the South. Um, one is green bean casserole. Mm -hmm. Standard, which really made it to the Christmas table primarily because of my wife Joanna has like fallen in love with the green bean casserole from all the Thanksgiving. Things mm -hmm. that we do, and she decided mm -hmm. this needs to be on our Christmas table. <laughs> uh, it's probably good with other, mm -hmm. And the other thing that made it onto the table from the south, and this one's from southern Italy, actually, uh, is this dish that my grandmother used to make. It's like a marinated shrimp. It's Ooh. mostly meant to be like an appetizer. Mm -hmm. It's shrimp that's marinated with capers, uh, um, onions and just oil and balsamic vinegar, and you you let that marinate overnight. And I'm telling you, dude, it's it served cold. It uh huh. It's served cold, and it transforms into something that. Mm. It, and it's something that I, it, like I when I moved away from home, the first thing I missed the first time I spent Christmas away from home. That was it. It was that. For whatever reason, it was that shrimp dish that they used to make mm. that I loved so much wow. as a kid. That <clears throat> so I my first Christmas away from home, I I didn't have it, and the next year I called my mother and I was like, "I need you to teach me how to make that because I can't have Christmas again without it." Wow. So that has traveled with me since essentially I left home in my wow, early twenties. Cool. It's really good, man. I, mm. Um. Uh, as a Christmas present to Sandra, an early Christmas present, a couple of days before, mm. um, I had booked her to uh, go to this restaurant here called Celeste. My friend, mm. I think you might have met him, man, Luda. He's a uh, he's like a on he's a master chef here, and he mm. opened a restaurant. Oh yeah, and he is he's amazing he took my super bowl food it's on youtube he took my super bowl food and put like a michelin spin on it <laughs> yes i do remember this guy yeah. <laughs> so i was like i want to go to this restaurant and every i heard that every season they do like a tasting like they premiered their menu so i thought sandra liked shit like that and it happened to be right around christmas so it's like an early christmas present on the 22nd we went and we had a celeste thing and it's like i'm not i've never been into actual fine dining I like good food. Right. I always knew that. But this is fine dining. And it just so happened that we were the only people there. So it was wow, like, okay. yeah, they because they had two tastings that day. Everybody went to the early one, probably because it was Christmas weekend. So we uh. were the only two people in the whole restaurant for the tasting. So all the chefs were catering directly to us. It was That insane, is so man. weird. That's amazing. <laughs> you could like, and it you was could like, be like snow falling <laughs> and all of that stuff. You could actually lie to Sandra and be like, "Actually, yeah, I rented out, baby. I, <laughs> I rented the whole place out for you, girl." <laughs> she was like, "Did you plan this?" I didn't even lie. She was like, "Did you plan this like this?" I was like, "No." Nah. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it. I thought about it too because I kind of like, well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it to it. So, but then I was that like, "No, I so just funny. exactly like that." <laughs> and then they um, um they brought all this stuff. Such good food, man. I would have lied immediately. <laughs> immediately. Anything for you, girl. <laughs> and then pawn the Christmas presents that I bought. <laughs> like the other presents that I bought, pawn it because of this experience. Be like, girl, man, yeah. that set me way back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. Uh, yeah. But yeah, okay. we're here to talk about football, man. We got the, <laughs> the week is going. Yes. We were we were really fortunate uh, in a in an interesting yeah. way because I think that um, Joanna had to work on Christmas Eve. Normally, Swedes would celebrate on Christmas Eve, and obviously, mm -hmm. the Sunday slate played out on Christmas Eve. So we celebrated with Joanna's family on the twenty fifth. So that meant that me, oh wow, Saga and Isak were fucking chilling on the couch on Christmas Eve, just completely locked in to this this wow. uh sunday slate the three of us and we had hot chocolate and we had some snacks and we were just kind of hanging out watching football Damn. um i was watching <laughs> on my phone man i know that's no fun i'm a little now as fortunate as we were for this christmas eve i'm gonna be a little fucked 
for this coming Sunday because mm. this Sunday is Chris is New Year's Eve. Yeah. And um I think I'm going we're going to some kind of a New Year's party and I, okay. I will probably likely not see any of the games in real time. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> but we'll see. Anyway, we should start with Thursday night. New Orleans Saints um came up a little short mm-hmm. against the Los Angeles Rams. Do not let the score fool you. Um 15 of these Saints 22 points basically came in garbage time. <laughs> yeah. Um this otherwise would have looked more like a blowout by the Rams. It um, felt like it. And it partially it felt like it because again, you know what I mean? It's like I'm so tired of apology. It, my man former Bulldog Matthew Stafford was out here <laughs> fucking He's on it. Feeling. He He's is on really it. on one these last yeah. couple of weeks. Um what was he? 24 for 34, 328 mm-hmm. yards, two touchdown passes. That opening drive that they had 14 plays, 95 yards, ate up nearly eight minutes a clock, going for it on fourth down to get that opening touchdown. <laughs> Stafford and McVay, those motherfuckers yeah. came to play. Yeah, um, man. And Dennis Allen, he's just out of his league, man. Oh, yeah. I don't 100%. know how long they keep him, but we'll see. He's going to have to have a hot seat next year <clears> if he <throat> doesn't get fired in the offseason. I mean, if a coach comes available, you got to take him. Yeah. I mean, and there will be coaches available. Do we, yeah, they it, the Saints for a long time. I've said this before. I'm not the only one who says this. A lot of people say this. They've done such a good job of never having to actually do a full rebuild. Mm-hmm. Like every year, they manage to remodel yeah. instead of rebuild, which, mm-hmm. from a business perspective, is probably pretty smart for your franchise because you're never. You never enter a phase where you're irrelevant. And for a team, one of the things that the Saints and the Falcons have had in common is that for the first 20 years of their existence, they were like legitimately irrelevant. Yeah. Just terrible football teams, just bad, bad, bad teams that win two or three games a year. And the Saints have been quite good at figuring out how to stay relevant year after year. That being said, I think it's time. It's time. Yeah to rethink their strategy a little bit. They're going to start one championship, man. <clears throat> because you're right. When you put them on a field against someone like, you, you know, some weeks it's like, oh, well, maybe it's fine. It, then you put them on the field and they play against Matthew Stafford. They play against a guy like Kieran Williams. They play against a Puka Nakua. I mean, Puka Sean Nakua McVay. went fucking ape, ape shit. Yeah, yeah, you put them up against a real football team and they look silly, right? Yeah. And to be fair, the Saints, like, like they have some good people. Like, Olave, even when the even when the Saints are bad, Olave is good, right? Yeah. So it's like it wins you us have money. So, you have something to build around. Um, Kamara, it's obviously time to move on from him. Um, I mean, the whole team only had thirty five total rushing yards in this game, which Oof. is kind of pathetic. Um, the the turnovers were obviously a big factor. Um, Carr only threw one pick, but they turned the ball over three times on downs. That plus the non-existent run that's game is just, that's the code. Yeah, and it's just kind of a tough way to win football games. I, I and I don't know is Taysom Hill injured because I feel like they're not really using him the way that they normally use. Like, man, I mean the fact that they're using him that's like a, it's a gimmick. <clears> that's <throat> like come on, it shows your your team is not where it needs to be. I you're 100 percent correct. I think it's more of a symptom of the problem than a. All right than a potential solution. I just mean that it's he he does help them to look like a competent football team sometimes, but yeah. I don't know. The Saints are the Saints are are I, I don't know. It's time to stop talking about the Saints. We can move yes. on to the next game. <laughs> Let's talk about the uh the Steelers who look like they're gonna avoid a losing record somehow again. They beat the brakes off the Bengals. Uh they look it's questionable call ever going with Trubisky when Mason Rudolph looks so good. Um and uh Jake Browning, he finally came through for you, man. Yeah. What do we call it? The uh the backup the ba- wake up call. Backup wake up <laughs> call finally arrived. Yeah. Uh and the other thing that finally arrived, I don't know why it took so long for the grapefruit truck to show up in in, in <laughs> Pittsburgh, but it has in arrived and you can and you can back that shit up because my man former <laughs> 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 Played the game of his life, yeah. uh, and also completely we saved. 
completely saved my fantasy football team. Um, mm. I mean, I, I, I can't even tell you how I, – I, I, who would have thought? I had him on the bench. And two minutes before the game starts, I'm like, I, you know what? Fuck it. If I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose with my Bulldogs. I stick him in there. Second snap of the game, the guy scores an 85-yard touchdown. <laughs> it's just Good. like, I mean, and then he finishes the game with what? Like his stat line 195 is so yards. Four receptions, he, 195 four, yards. <laughs> <laughs> and he had, and he also sandwiched in there between those two touchdowns was that insane circus catch where he's like, yeah falling backwards and he gets his heel he does it's not even a toe drag swag it's like a heel drag swag Insane. i mean yeah. it was unbelievable uh it's interesting i i mean whatever it's the year of the backup quarterback i think that mason rudolph offers you something in, in perhaps a two game stretch that's but all they you need. would expect Pickers will be more back. than two you put him in there for three. I don't. Th- I think they need to move on from from Pickett. Kenny Pickett. I think Kenny Pickett. I feel like for me at this point, I have formed the opinion that Kenny Pickett is a bad quarterback. Okay. I, I don't think. I think he's a bad quarterback. I don't think he's going to be a good NFL quarterback. I think the Steelers. I know this. Whatever they're going to give him another year, of course. But I think they're going to learn quickly. He ain't it. Hmm. I just think he's not that good. Nah, that ain't it, y'all. I, I really the, don't uh, think he's that good. <laughs> the Chargers, are they good? Because uh, Brandon Staley out, the new coach bump came through, and they almost beat Buffalo, who needed a last-minute field goal to win the game 24-22 to over the Chargers, who uh, looked Smith. way better than they looked. Yeah, Gift came Gift, through, man. Gift Smith from Mableton, Georgia, almost pulled it <laughs> off in a big spot. I can't believe it. I looked at I was like, who is this guy? I look him up. Yeah. First thing I find out, he's from Mableton, Georgia. I'm like, of course he is. Because I think I heard him in an interview. Like someone, I was listening to some other program, and and they were they said what we said. Like, I feel like I've never heard of this guy before. Yeah. But we found him at, a, like at an interview. They played some tape of the interview, and I was like, this motherfucker is definitely – his accent, I was like, he's either from Georgia or he's from South Carolina, one of the two. Mm. I, I know that accent, and yeah. sure enough, he's from Mableton. Uh, but, yeah, he, he nearly pulled it off. This, to me, felt like a little bit of a trap game slash yeah. coach fired, perhaps. Mm. You know what I mean? Like like a little of that hard, combined. <clears throat> they played hard. They, had not, they have nothing to play for. So, sh- of course, shout out to the players for coming mm. out there and – you know, making it making it difficult. It was mostly it's mostly field goals going on all night, um, and you know, they they stopped the run, right? They they took care of um, they took care of James Cook for the most part. Mm-hmm. He did have seventy yards rushing, but um, but they kept him out of the end zone, especially a week after. I mean, James Cook had a just went nuclear the week before. Um, Gabe, da- Gabe Davis is one of the weird players. This guy has literally had like zero receptions for like two mm-hmm. weeks straight. And now all of a sudden he shows up with four for 130 and a touchdown. It's like, what do we I, – yeah. I think the Bills just found themselves in a fist fight and, and they just figured out a way to, to win this one. Yeah. Um, it was like a talent overcame type of thing. Mm-hmm. But they're using uh, – I think the Bills are using Josh Allen better than they were before. They're not mm-hmm. putting it all on him anymore, and they're keeping right. his passes down, man. He only threw the ball 21 times. I think that's the key. If that's they can an keep interesting it down, point because yeah. they did this last week, too. He threw mm-hmm. it even less last week. Yeah, he threw it 15 um, times last week. It's like <clears throat> they're realizing this new offensive coordinator is like, maybe we got a good team <laughs> instead mm. of uh, trying to prove something. And later on in this, in this episode, we'll talk about a coach that did the opposite and lost. Trying right. to make it about the quarterback. But right now we're going to make it about the Falcons, who got a victory 29-10 to 10 over the Colts, who were surging. Everybody thought they were the, they're the that squad that's going to sh- shock some people in the playoffs, and the Falcons dropped 29 on them and held them to 10. Impressive, right? Pretty impressive. Um, felt a little like a Christmas miracle. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Taylor Heineke. Um, <clears throat> Taylor Heineke played pretty well. Um, you know, every, this is a really, this is like the kind of game that you want the Falcons to play 
a very How about balanced... B. John Robinson in the passing game? How about more exactly. of that? Give me more of that, Atlanta. Give me more of a balanced attack where, mm-hmm. you know, you, and you're, uh, and by balance, I, the balance between Bijan in the run game and Bijan in the passing game. He's got 12 mm-hmm. carries for 72 yards, but he also has seven receptions for 50 yards. More of that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then use Tyler Algiers to be the, to be the bowling ball. You know, run him up the fucking a gap. Yeah, you didn't know? they have a? They had a sequence I saw in this game where, I th- correct me if I'm wrong, but it feels like there was a sequence when there was Bijan successful chunk run, Bijan mm-hmm. uh, swing pass successful run. I mean, mm-hmm. run after the catch, mm-hmm. Kyle Pitts touchdown. <laughs> Something like that. It, was, it was, like, the first, <clears throat> was, was the like, first. It was the first touch. That first touchdown drive of the game. Um, it was like is, they used their that weapons. Happened. It was yeah. like, how that doesn't look hard, right? Yeah. Do, yeah. More of that, please. Um, I mean, ultimately, what's happening here is that this is just an effort to continue my misery because Arthur Smith is basically mm-hmm. playing to save his job. We all know, we've all been told multiple times in the last week uh, that barring a late season collapse, Arthur Smith is expected to keep his job. Um, so, you know, two more games to play and I don't know. I think we'll probably be stuck with them. I, there's, there's also still a fairly decent chance that they make the playoffs in all honesty. Yeah. This, the saints play the Buccaneers this weekend. Saints always play the Bucks hard. Uh, if they beat them and we keep winning, then we're going to leapfrog the Bucks and we're going <laughs> to, and we're going to make it into the playoffs and get the shit stomped out of us by, by <laughs> Dallas in the first round, basically, or the Eagles, one of the two, like, uh, so oof. whatever it is, what it is. I, I, I'm it's your trap between like, I don't want to make the playoffs because I'd rather have a better draft pick, but also at the same time, mm. you don't want to watch your nah, team lose. That so draft like, shit, man. Yeah, so fuck the I don't draft, know. man. You want to have I, good times, man. You want to be in the big game, big day. It was Christmas Eve, and the Falcons delivered a comfortable win, which yeah. I was, I was happy with. It, it felt good. Uh, yeah. One win that wasn't so comfortable was the uh, Seahawks over the Titans, who made them made them itch a little bit at the end. But then, what the Seahawks forgot was the secret weapon that they had on the Titans bench, and that's Ryan Tannehill, who's not going to throw the ball. He's going to stand in the pocket and get sacked at the end of the game because that's what Ryan Tannehill does, and that's what he did when Will Levis went out. Uh, Or Mm. did Levis go out last week? Yeah, uh, Tannehill started the game. Yeah, he started the game. Yeah, he's so bad. I I got reminded Um, so much of how bad he is during this game. My favorite stat that popped up in this game – was uh, this year in the 2023 season, uh, Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry had the same amount of touchdown passes. <laughs> <laughs> and Tannehill started yeah. quite a bit at the beginning of the season. <laughs> yeah. Derrick Henry, uh, Henry threw another touchdown pass in this game. That was super fun. Um, Remember two seasons ago when Tannehill was an MVP candidate? Mm. When everybody was talking about, oh, it was the three seasons ago when Arthur Smith got credit for turning this guy around. Yeah, exactly. And they had AJ Brown, and then they got rid of AJ Brown, and then everything just kind of fell apart. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you like AJ there somewhere. There's a hot mm-hmm. take in there somewhere where uh, co- quarterbacks mean more to coaches than we ever gave credit, and wide receivers mean more to quarterbacks than we ever give credit. Fair point. Um, I mean, you know, I don't know about the Tennessee Titans. Uh, I, I do think – I think they have something with Will Levis that they can yeah. build on next year for sure. I think so too, yeah. Um, but they have to rebuild this wide receiver room, honestly. Um, because yeah. if you're going to – I mean, letting go of A.J. Brown was obviously a stupid decision. And at this point, you have an aging DeAndre Hopkins – who I still mm-hmm. think could be good, um, but you don't want him to be the main guy. No. Um, and you're out here throwing the majority of your targets to Chig a Conquo. Like, this is not going to work. <laughs> like, you, you need, no. they need to draft some wide receivers or get some in the, in free agency or something because their wide receiver room, they threw the majority of their passes to a tight end and a running back. And after that, they got two targets, two, re- 
three targets to Traylon Burks and four targets to DeAndre Hopkins. It's like, what are we doing here? This is yeah. not. <clears throat> On the other side, um, you got the Seahawks who uh, it looks good, but they look like they have a ceiling. You know what I'm saying? When I watch them, I'm like, you can see their ceiling. Yeah. It's not going to be that well, far. What's so funny, the week after they beat the Eagles, to watch them kind of come down to earth against a team like mm-hmm. the like the Titans, it really is. I think it's one of those things where like, it I feel this feels more like a problem in the NFC. Just th- next these, game, we'll talk about it. These mid-level teams are so unpredictable. Mm-hmm. It's like they can do something amazing one week, and then they can just fucking shit their pants the next. Well, one uh, team clinched their division and still plays like a mid-level team, and that's the Detroit Lions. Who? Congratulations <laughs> to the Lions! You did it. You won a division for the first time since uh, eighteen thirty-six. And uh, <laughs> for the first time since slavery, uh, <laughs> the first time uh, a free there's been a black free Detroit Lion hoisting the divisional trophy. <laughs> no, but it's there's honestly like the first time since like oh three or ni- some shit like that. No, 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 no. Is it really? It's the first time since nineteen ninety three. Ninety three. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thirty <laughs> That's years. A damn shame. 30, 30 years. years. Yeah, come on now. But congrats to them. They damn mm. near lost. They should have lost. But Nick True. Mullins forgot. He left his brain on the in his bag. I don't know. <laughs> oh, wow. Four that interceptions. Final, and that final one, that last throw was... Yeah. If people... You see Jefferson? Like, bro. If you want to know what a... Like when someone refers to a pass, like he threw up a duck. Yeah. Pull that up. Because it... And he didn't he didn't get touched or anything. It just came out of his hand and that ball was like wobbling like crazy. Uh and I don't remember who it was, but he basically just he the the D B had plenty of time to jump the mm-hmm. route. He did that and just took that yeah. shit. The game was he over. ordered a hot dog while the ball was in the air. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll take I'll take one of those yeah, a cheese on it. Oh, interception. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's really time. funny because Mullins, despite throwing for over 400 yards and two touchdowns. <laughs> so like if you were just, by. if you take your finger and you just put it over that interception column, you'd be like, man, yeah. that guy's pretty good. But then you take your finger away and go, oh, wait, he got four picks and he got sacked four times. Uh, yeah, this was, and they could not run the ball. To, to the Lions, I, I think the reason why they won this game, oddly enough, uh, the Lions defense um, just – completely eliminated the run game. Yeah, put it in um, Mullen's hands. Exactly. They they made Nick Mullins. They said, okay, if you're going to play Nick Mullins, you're going to have to beat us with Nick Mullins. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he threw four interceptions. And again, another one of these teams that knows how to use their their young talent, Jameer Gibbs. Mm. Uh, my God, my favorite, this guy. Favorite young running back, man. Some of these Jeez. cuts, him mm-hmm. and Bijan, like they have yep. a lot of similarities, these two. The way they cut and put a dude on skates to you get know what? like. Hmm. Jameer Gibbs is like Bijan and Pacheco. Yeah, because he does. He runs harder he runs than Bijan. He runs hard. Yeah, he runs hard, but he's finesse too. Yeah. And it's like, I like Jameer Gibbs a lot. I like Bijan a lot too, man. I like Pacheco, kind of. <laughs> But not as much mm. as those two, man. This is it's a nice little Bichon, group of uh, young running backs coming up. Bijan, I heard somebody say, I don't remember if it was you or somebody else, but but not Bijan, but uh, Pacheco runs on flat ground like he's running upstairs. <laughs> I didn't say that, but that's good. That's good. <laughs> it's he very strange. Gibbs and Bijan are, are so smooth the way they cut yeah. through the defense. Uh, like a hot knife through butter. Uh, 80 yards on the ground, two touchdowns. Um, he also had 20 yards on four receptions. He's just a, he's just a dangerous player. He's so, so good. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown had a day with 106 yards and touchdown. Uh, Jefferson, he tried man, 141 yards and a touchdown. He looked good, but again, his his quarterback was Nick Mullins. And some of those great catches were great because Nick Mullins overthrew him. (laughs) Because the throws were so bad, you know what yeah. I mean. So, KJ Osborne I wonder if, good. Uh, man, they just, you know what, you know who wins in these games, man, in this season, mm. Kirk mm. Cousins. Yes, true. Yeah, 
Kirk Cousins is the winner. He's like, bro, if y'all had me, but but they were losing with him. I have a not so – it's not really a hot take. It's more of a like a warm take that K.J. Osborne – I was thinking about this when mm. I was watching the game. I feel like K.J. Osborne might be one of the most underrated receivers in the NFL because like that. He, he only shows up when they – like when – when someone goes like, at, who was it that went down? Was it Addison? Addison, mm-hmm. Jordan Addison, the rookie wide receiver has been so good, goes down. And then all of a sudden KJ Osborne's a star. He did yep. this last year too. Remember he went through stretches where it was like, mm-hmm. Oh, we need KJ Osborne to step up in this game. And the guy scores, you like two touchdowns. It's like, he, I feel like every time they need him to step up, he's there. And it's like, why don't you ask more of this guy? Yeah. Play, like, play uh, game plan it around it. Yeah. For, Throw it to him more. He got seven targets in this game. He caught five. He got 95 yards and a touchdown. Use the fucking guy. I feel like he's underrated. He's undervalued and underused. Hmm. Um, somebody who I'm wondering is underused is Trevor Simeon. Do you think he's used enough? The Jets, <laughs> the Jets threw the ball 49 times with him. I think that my life – I think the quality of my life would 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 go up at least 1% or 2% if I never had to see Trevor Simeon again. <laughs> so so my answer is no. I don't yeah. think he needs okay. to be used more. Okay, well, Brees Hall had 95 yards and two touchdowns. That's nice. I yes, never heard of this. More of him. Rodriguez Jr. Uh, from the Washington. Washington fought hard to get back in this game. Jets were beating the brakes off of them. And yep. they fought their way back in. And I thought they won, and then the Jets win it in the end. But – Oof, it was 27 nothing at one point, wasn't it? Or 27-3 or some crazy shit. Yeah, they were... <clears throat> they 27-7? Were in, yeah, and there were a ton of turnovers in this game too, mm-hmm. right? Um, not so many... <clears throat> well, yeah, Sam Howell threw two picks, but then there were a couple of fumbles. There was one fumble. They fumbled the ball away once, but there were like some big-time mm-hmm. plays by the, by the Jets' defense, understandably. Uh, or expectedly, uh, Sam Howell did he get injured or did he get benched? I don't. I think recall. he got benched. I think he got benched too. And Jacoby Brissett came in mm-hmm. and looked pretty good. Yeah. Um, he brought him back. Th- <clears throat> this happened in the other. We'll get to that later. But the Tommy DeVito hype train finally came to an end as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, Jacoby Brissett looked good. I mean, he only threw 13 passes and he had 100 yards and a touchdown. Yeah. Meanwhile, you got Sam Howell out here. Six, oh my God, dude! I didn't even notice that <laughs> until just now. Six for 22. Yeah, it's like 30 <laughs> percent. 56 Do you yards, see his, two interceptions. <clears throat> you see his QBR rating? No. Okay, what is Trevor it? Simeon. Trevor Simeon. Just for some context, Trevor Simeon. 27 for 49, 217 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. A pretty mediocre passer rating of 64.8. Mm. Not good, right. right? Sam Howell is on the other passer hand. rating or quarterback rating? <clears throat> uh, QBR. Okay, quarterback, quarterback rating. Okay. Six for 22, 56 yards, no touchdowns, two picks. Sam Howell's QBR. Three. 1.7. <laughs> <laughs> One point seven. Get out of here. Let's that leave this game. Bad. Let's leave this game. This in- inconsequential for us. <laughs> that is so bad. You are not serious people. <laughs> exactly. That is hundred uh, percent. I couldn't have said it better. There's a lot of bad football from what I watch. Yeah. All right, then we got Speaking the, of bad uh... football, the next game. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Another bad one. Yeah. Panthers. Packers 30 to 33 Packers pull it out uh and show how <laughs> mediocre it is <laughs> <laughs> damn near lost Bryce Young started out rough he got into the flow ends up with over 300 yards passing it might be his first time doing that I don't know uh and the Panthers tried to pull it out man because they got nothing they got nothing to, to lose you know what I mean they're not playing for a draft pick mm. and uh yeah, they almost got it but the Packers end up pulling it off in the end yeah yeah, this was another one where the pa- the Packers were were dominating this game for the most mm-hmm. part. Um, and yeah, they Bryce the Young was. Kinda... They got to do something about that line. It's it, it's un it's unreal. Especially yeah, you he... selling uh, forty five cent tickets. As did you hear about that? No. What? 
they're selling tickets for 45 cents to their games. The Panthers. I have never heard that before. That's insane. 45 cent tickets. I can look wow. it up to verify, but I, I did see that wow. uh, multiple places. Wow. Uh, yeah. So they're trying to get people there. It's obviously a shit show Man. there. Tepper is looking like an idiot. And then you got the offensive line. Bryce Young was Oof. running more than ever. He also took some yep. hits. But he's uh he's trying, man, but that line is so trash. He I mean, I, I'll say it again. I, I watched this guy throughout his entire college career. He's a good football player. He really, really is. Um you just gotta give him some more time. He needs more protection. Um, you gotta get him a wide receiver room and you got to fix that offensive line. He can be a good NFL quarterback. I'm certain of it. Um, but th- to me, th- I don't think, you know, there's been all this talk about Frank Reich wanted to take CJ Stroud. I don't think it would have mattered to be honest with this team. I don't think CJ Stroud would have no. no, no, been no. good on this football team. This is a bad He's football bad. team. I think he's, I think he's uh, head and shoulders <laughs> above. Of, above uh, Bryce, though. I yeah, I think I he probably would have been a Stroud little bit looks better. More but... like, he looks more like poised. A lot of it is pre-snap stuff that you just got to pick up. Mm. You got to call the, that where the blitz is coming from if you've been watching the tape and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm-hmm. And he, if you can't call it, you can't just use your athleticism to get away from it anymore because you're in the NFL. So it's even more important to be like, this is the mic. This is the blitz. Slide to the mm. right. Pick mm. it up. And it gives me two more seconds. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. If he's not getting that part right, then he's making it bad for himself too. So I think that was uh that was kind of Tannehill's problem is the pre snap read to be off. I keep mm. I keep having my Tannehill PTSD show up. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> but like the Dolphins offensive line is beat up. You know what I mean? Ah. It's like all backups except for two guys now, two starters on the out of five players now. And Still upright quarterback. So you got to get it right. Get the ball out faster, maybe. Yeah. Houston Texans, speaking of Stroud, uh, well, without Stroud, Davis Mills out here throwing for two touchdowns against the Browns, but it wasn't enough. And the Browns are 10-5 and five with Joe Flacco looking like like he's uh, got a good connection with Amari uh, Cooper over there. Who, uh, Jesus. <laughs> he got, uh, had 265 yards. Also known as five games for the uh, Panthers. <laughs> I thought it was really funny. I looked this up in the middle of the game because obviously Amari Cooper was just going absolutely nuclear. Uh, he breaks the franchise record, uh, by the mm-hmm. way, for the mm-hmm. Browns in receiving yards. I got more on that um, later. And um, <clears throat> I was so curious. I was like, who – in our fantasy, who has Amari Cooper in our fantasy league? <laughs> <laughs> and it turned out, mm. I think whoever, I can't remember which league it was, but the guy who has Amari Cooper, it was he's in last place. It, <laughs> yeah, it was fading. I was fading. like, it, poor fucking guy is like playing for. Is it in playing, the uh, relegation league? <laughs> I think so. Okay. Playing for last place, and he's got um, finally Amari Cooper shows up. I mean, <laughs> to be fair, Amari Cooper's had a pretty good year, but but this yeah. is absurd. I mean, the guy had like over fifty points in fantasy. It was crazy. Um, the, uh, Case Keenum started this game for the Houston Texans, by the way. Uh, but he oh, threw yeah. zero zero touchdowns and two picks, and then they bring in Davis Mills, who, mm-hmm. who definitely looked a lot better. And the Texans tried to make a game before. of it. Flacco had some troubles with it with uh, turnovers as well, but he just there's something about him, man. He's just he's he's playing. Ooh, he's a, he's cool. kind of fun to watch because he's playing like like yeah, this is my last chance to do something fun, and and I'm just gonna roll with it. I'm gonna fucking chuck this thing downfield. I got Amari Cooper, I got David and Joku, uh, and we're just gonna go try and win this thing. Uh, Have you seen I mean, the movie the, Necessary Roughness? Yeah, not in a long time, but yeah. <laughs> But that's Joe Flacco. He's the the guy who's forty years old, going to finish up his college career and uh, playing with a bunch of uh, you know young players. That's, that's yeah. Joe Flacco coming in, just like ah, oh, I got it. It's that vibe. And it, and you know now with Flacco, this this team is not the Browns that you would expect. I mean, they only had mm-hmm. fifty four yards rushing, and 
it's just all about the quarterback. And this, what we're seeing from Joe Flacco right now is, is a hundred percent what the Browns were expecting to see from Deshaun Watson. This is what they thought they were getting when they got Deshaun Watson, a guy who could throw mm-hmm. for damn near 400 yards and three touchdowns. Mm-hmm. And, and you could take some pressure off of your run game. And I just think it's kind of funny that Deshaun Watson can't, managed to do that on a regular basis, but a damn near 40 year old Joe Flacco can. Mm -hmm. That looks like a lot of money going down the drain. That's an interesting indictment on Deshaun Watson. In my opinion, if we're talking about quarterbacks who, if Kirk cousins won in the Vikings game, uh, Deshaun Watson definitely lost in Mm -hmm. this game. (laughs) Well said. (laughs) Well said, man. Browns are still fighting for a playoff spot though. They're 10 and five. They're going to, who would have thought the Browns the were going to be ten and five? I mean that nobody. I mean, no, some people did because we thought they were going to have Deshaun Watson. He's going to have another year under his belt. They, some people true. picked him to win a division because of that, but nobody okay, saw well, this. Maybe I should correct myself and say who mm. once we saw Deshaun Watson and once he and started Chubb. having this injury bug and coming in and going out and then losing Nick Chubb, mm-hmm. nobody thought the Browns no. would be a ten win team at that point for sure. There's no way Stefanski is not coach of the year. It's a fair point. It really is a fair point. No way. I agree. Um, How about Todd Bowles? Can he be coach of the year knowing (laughs) that his team, all they had to do was go out and get Baker to take them to the promised land? 30 and 12, 8 and 7 is their record. Beat the brakes off the Jacksonville Jaguars. Make everybody Mm. come back around to their takes of generational quarterbacks that they had Mm. about Trevor Lawrence, who looked lost and alone out there. Man, he looks bad. The the Jaguars in general are just completely unraveling before our eyes in the last yeah. several weeks. It's been really interesting to watch. And Baker Mayfield, another quarterback who's playing like there's no tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the last couple of weeks, he's just been unbelievable. Just yeah. unbelievable. And the way the ball comes out of his hand, like when they hit that slow motion shot uh, of, of a pass from Baker Mayfield, yeah. it's like a – it's such a tight spiral and you could just, I feel like you can almost hear it. Like if there was nobody there, <laughs> I guarantee you, you could hear that ball whistle. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. He's, he's playing his ass off right now. It's uh, a little crazy. Uh, they, this game never looked in doubt. Uh, the bucks were up uh, 20 to nothing at the half. Uh, Jacksonville were just, they, they just couldn't do shit. They couldn't do anything. <laughs> I couldn't do nothing. He got sacked three times. He threw two yeah. picks. Um, they also – he fumbled the ball a couple of times. Uh, yeah, they fumbled the ball twice. They fumbled the ball away twice. Trevor Lawrence fumbled it one more time, but they kept mm-hmm. – I mean, it was just – nothing went right for them. Uh, and the Bucks are playing like a team that knows that they just got to keep winning to win the division. And I, I kind of – barring – what usually turns into a fist fight with a team like the Saints, I fully yeah. expect the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to win this uh, to win this division. Yeah, nobody saw that coming beginning of the year. Mm. We laughed mm. when they got Baker, and it, we started talking about how they were going to finish last. Yeah, we we're all saying that Panthers are supposed to be doing something special. Speaking the of Bears. something special, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Justin Fields, huh? Justin Fields, 15 receptions, huh? Mm. 15 passes there that are caught, 20 out of 27, huh? Throwing for 170, a tutty huh? and a pick. Let's go. <laughs> oh, man. If this is his he audition, did, man. He did rush for 97 yards and a touchdown. But as you keep saying, I feel like as much as you – like. As much as you have to be impressed by that to a certain degree, it exposes a larger problem with the team. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. if you if you keep looking down the box scores and you look and you see that your tight end is your leading receiver with 107 yards and the next closest person has only 18 yards receiving. That's DJ Moore. That's supposed to be your number one wide receiver. <laughs> You paid a lot your of money one for wide, Your number one wide, wide receiver has three receptions for 18 yards. 
while your quarterback has 97 yards rushing. That's a problem. Yes. That's a legitimate problem. Your quarterback can't read defenses. Exactly. That's why he's running so much. On the other they side, win. you got Kyler Murray throwing 24 for 38, 230 yards, two touchdowns. If that was happening in a loss for the Bears, you know you got your guy. But yeah. in a victory, you realize you don't have your guy. That's not a good mm. sign, man. <clears throat> That's an that's a really interesting point because and also I think you compare these two quarterbacks there's a lot of similarities right mm-hmm. they're both small they both run what Fields not small <clears throat> Fields is he's not as small as Kyler Murray but he is he's small he's short er he's kind of shorter <laughs> you know what, what is I mean? he like six one something like that is he I thought he was well, a bigger dude maybe he's taller than I think he is but i don't know i always thought of him as being a little small he's not yeah, as he's small as tall. kyler murray but they have some 1.9 meters whatever that is oh don't even talk to me I about don't know meters. What that I, is. I don't know what that is either stupid internet it's six two okay he's not super oh tall. yeah he's not he's taller than i thought he was but my yeah. point is is that they have very similar playing styles right they're two quarterbacks yes. who like to run. They're two quarterbacks who can get outside the pocket. Mm-hmm. But the difference between them is that when Kyler Murray gets outside of the pocket, he sees the field. Mm-hmm. Fields, uh, Justin Fields does not Mm-mm. see the field, despite the fact that his last his name last is name. literally Fields. <laughs> I was uh, so it's kind can't of a, see it, man. <laughs> can't can't see his own last name, uh, which is weird. It's just it's just in your name. <laughs> It's literally in your name, dude. I don't know what you're Justin. doing. Justin. Get it? Justin. Uh, Justin. Then the, uh, Justin, your name. Uh, then we got the uh, <laughs> the Dolphins played the Cowboys in a, uh, maybe game of the week. A thrilling. This is my kind of game. It was my kind of game. Two, peop- two teams, good offenses, but two teams <laughs> with good defenses. And they both were like, let's go. And the Dolphins pulled out close victory. Uh, on the leg of Jason Sanders, who all year I've been saying, as soon as he got his check, he stopped being as good, which was true statistically. But in this game, mm. he got to be the winner. I almost thought Mike McDaniel out outthought himself, as his uh, comrade Kyle Shanahan s- tends to do. Mm. Going for it on fourth down, nothing's been working. You are the seven-yard line, something like that, and it's fourth and goal. And instead of just taking your three points – you go for it, and you don't get the points. And the whole game, I was like, man, that field goal would have been nice. Because they mm. were holding the Cowboys, but they ended up winning anyway. And they got to this game. I heard somebody say this. This game somehow successfully shut all the annoying narratives down in one swoop. Mm. There was this Dak can't do it at the end of the game. Dak did it at the end of the game. Right. He brought his team down, throws a beautiful pass. Over Jalen Ramsey, and this guy makes a great catch. Cooks makes an amazing catch, and you'd think that could be the one. It was a go ahead touchdown. Heavily Um, contested catch. I mean, I cannot believe he held on to that ball. Yeah, the ball looks like it's squirting out. He holds it in. Good, great all around play, both sides. Dolphins can't beat a good team. They beat, or a team with a winning record, they beat that, shuts that down too. The only, only narrative that's still alive is the Cowboys can't win on the road, blah, blah, blah. But it's all bullshit TV talk. But somehow they got to shut down a lot of that shit, both of these two teams that are going to be alive in the playoffs and going to be fun to watch down the road. I was, of this course, was happy su- for my Dolphins. This was such an impressive victory uh, for the Dolphins. For, you know, two teams that are known more so for their explosive offense, this yeah. game turned into to, it turned into a fist fight. Um and and the Dolphins came out on top by and large because of their defense mm-hmm. and how they were able to recover almost instantaneously. We were texting about this game too. Like there was this one sequence in particular where Cowboys were in the red zone. They take a shot at the end zone. Dolphins get popped for pass interference. Ball moves yeah. down to the half yard line, and on the very next snap, they get a twelve yard sack. It was just like, mm-hmm. man, this fucking Dolphins defense came to play. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Loving it, it also didn't talk help. About it. <clears throat> the one really questionable, whatever. If it works, it works. But it didn't work. You know, the Cowboys had another sequence where they were like on the one yard line, 
And instead of just giving the ball to uh, Tony oh. Pollard and just bought, have him bulldoze in, you know, they hand it to their uh, they hand it to their fullback and he fumbles on the one yard line. <laughs> it's like that, that would have changed yeah. the game right there. But the deck the was losing people, the ball as he was giving it to him too. So it was on that. For, but the part that people forget about was that on the play right before that was a pass play mm-hmm. to Pollard. And he looks like he is absolutely his, like his back and his ass broke the plane mm-hmm. of the end zone. But the ball never did, and it uh, was just Elliot like with the tackle, man. Jumps in, pulls a, him. It was yeah. such a big time fucking play. Like this game was like a perfect example of like how football can be such a game of inches, mm-hmm. and how so, those inches like just really, really mattered in this game. It was just such a great performance by the Dolphins, and I agree with you. A lot of narratives got destroyed in this game for me yeah, as well. Such an impressive performance. Uh, another thing that was destroyed probably is the uh, Patriots' chance to get the first pick in the draft, <laughs> mm. <clears throat> which their fans well as, per- are pretending they want to happen. Yeah, because they're annoying as well as, as the fans. yeah, as well as the Broncos' uh, chances of making the playoffs were also oh, yeah, yeah. pretty much destroyed in this game. You're 100 percent correct. Um, this this one, I mean, the New England defense definitely came to play in this game. Uh, they sack Russell Wilson five times, um, and we're just kind of swarming. Really, just sort of killed the run game. Made Russell Wilson, you know, they said Russell Wilson's going to have to beat us, and they could, and he couldn't. He couldn't do it. Um, you know, it, despite the fact that they they had a really good uh, fourth quarter sort of uh, effort to win the game, mm. but. Uh, in the end, the Patriots were able to kind of hold on and just eke out this victory by three points. Yeah. Um, I don't know. These Bailey are... Zappi, man. I don't have much more to say besides Bailey Zappi surprised us. This uh, quarterback carousel in New England is impressive and fun <laughs> to watch the, as they look like a bad team, but they're now spoilers, and that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. But both of these teams, I think, officially can settle into the – with two more games to go, I, I feel like they've settled into the irrelevant category. Yes. Yes, we can move on. <laughs> the uh, Raiders are – I don't know, man. I don't know. They got. Do they have the, the Chiefs number? Because it feels like they gave up a game they should have beat the Chiefs in, and then they made up for it by beating the Chiefs in a game that nobody would have thought they would win. Chiefs kind of need to be winning games, and now they're 9-6. And – uh Basically, the Ra- Raiders' defense holds them to 14 points and then scores the exact same amount on defense and wins the game with six I mean, the, points. <clears throat> this game obviously turned on those defensive plays because, I mean, you look at you look at Aiden O'Connell. He's 9 for 21, 62 <laughs> yards passing, yeah. right? No touchdowns, no picks. But the Raiders fortunately had – that's Back four to- times less, four times fewer <laughs> yards than Amari Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks to those two d- defensive plays, which happened within seconds of one another, you had a you had a fumble that was scooped up. Mm. You had a thick six scooped up by the big man yeah. taken to the house, <laughs> and then on the very next sequence for the Chiefs, Play. Holmes throws throws a pick six um yeah. so you had you had those two sequences which essentially kind of you know th- as far as points are concerned is kind of how they got to 20 obviously and then how they managed to kind of sort of smother and choke this game away from the chiefs he, he, uh, again i'm not going to apologize for the fact that zamir white is a georgia bulldog uh, but he had 22 <laughs> carries for 145 yards. This guy, I don't know why they don't ever use him when when Josh Jacobs is healthy. Mm. Like this team could do what so many other teams do, where they have a running back by committee situation. Where I mean, Josh Jacobs is known for getting injured every year. Maybe you could sort mm-hmm. of prevent that Take from happening by giving a few more snaps to Zamir White because the guy's clearly capable of doing it. Yeah. 
I mean, he 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 ran for 145 yards on what's supposed to be one of the top five defenses in the league. I don't I don't know mm. what we're doing here by not using Zamir White. So, uh, how many rushes did he have? 22. 22. You know, that's the same uh, exact amount of helmets that were thrown by the Chiefs on the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! That that clip of it's Kelsey like, come on, man. his helmet. Kelsey, Mahomes, fucking uh, uh, Tony, Kadarius, Tony, put me in goals. <laughs> oh, my God. No, he was Forget a healthy that. scratch, right? Oh, uh, no, but it was just, it's insane uh, how, uh, it's so funny how entitled the Chiefs look. Um, when they did score a touchdown, I told told uh, Sandra, I was like, watch, 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 they're going to show Taylor Swift. And they did, and she even thought it was ridiculous <laughs> that you could call it. And it's like, come on. Uh, but, yeah, they're they're not looking good, man, not looking scary at all. No, no, this is not going to be their year. Nah, the uh, is it the Giants' year though? <laughs> <laughs> they played the Eagles, and uh, I don't know, man. Eagles, Eagles kind of had to had to tough it out in this one. Yeah, this was one of those like it was a tale of two halves. Um, it, the Eagles were up. 20 to three at the half. Yeah. That's right. pretty much when I decided to go to bed. I was so fucking tired. That was, it, I was exhausted. This was Christmas day. Right. Yeah. This was the 25th. Right. So the or family Christmas had Eve, left right? that. No, this was Christmas day. I think <clears throat> this was the 25th. Oh, Christmas day. Yeah. Yeah. Christmas yeah. Day. And I, I think the family had just left and me and, uh, like the extended family had just left the house. We had celebrated with them on Christmas Day. And me and Joanna and the kids sat down on the sofa and we watched the first half. And by halftime, we were like, this is over. So I was a little surprised to see when mm-hmm. I woke up that the Giants had had kind of fought their way back into this. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I didn't realize at the time was, uh, oh, it's because they put in Tyrod Taylor. <laughs> Why not start him? If he's healthy enough uh, to play, stop with this shit. Why do even honestly, think it's not even close between De- Tommy DeVito and Tyrod Taylor? I think so too, and I think it's one of those things where Brian Dayball essentially came to his senses. Uh, the Tommy DeVito story, I mean, it's been fun. I'm not going to lie; yeah. it has been a fun story. But you, <laughs> what's fun for us as right. fans? is not necessarily the correct decision right. when it comes to managing your football team. And I think that we saw that in this game um, because Tommy DeVito is nine for 16, <laughs> 55 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. Tyrod Taylor comes in, goes seven for 16, 133 yards, a touchdown. And yes, he did throw a pick at the end of the game, I think. Um, yeah. But clearly if you had had, Tyrod Taylor in this game from the beginning, you would have had a better shot for sure. Yeah. He's obviously throwing right? it downfield. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And he gives another dimension and he's seen more. It's, it's like, it's common sense. I didn't know he was healthy because why would you start Tommy DeVito? It's insane. This was a, this was a story last or two weeks ago when, when Tyrod Taylor was clear to play. Yeah. And they and the and and they decided to keep rolling with DeVito because it was on the tails of that Monday night victory for the Giants. Uh and they interviewed Tyrod and he was like, Yeah, it's obviously very disappointing, but you know, what are you gonna do? Um but I think he was definitely vindicated in this game. Um They better stick now the, with him, man. the Eagles won this game, but they need to I don't know. I, I'd I'd be a little nervous. Um, I'd be a little nervous that they allowed the Giants to get back into this and nearly let it slip away. Um, had it not what been, is- had it not been for my man former Bulldog DeAndre Swift, who had 92 <laughs> yards and a touchdown, and my man former Bulldog Keely Ringo, who had the game <laughs> interception at the end of the game. So. It's a good thing that you got the, all those dogs on the team, or else the yeah. Eagles would have been fucked. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, That's all. The uh, the Ravens beat the brakes off the 49ers. Mm. Like beat the like came went and got the switch themselves <clears throat> and beat the brakes mm. off the 49ers, man. 
Wait, what? Kyle Shanahan's 49ers. <laughs> well, I got whoa, a question whoa, whoa. for you, man. Hold on. I got a question Kyle's... for you, man. Yeah, go ahead. Ask I, me a question. I got a, a, a quick question for you, man. Mm. <laughs> I know you're running your victory lap, so you might as well do it right away. <laughs> How is this game Kyle Shanahan's fault? How is the loss to the Ravens Kyle Shanahan's fault? Okay, first I'll start by saying I, I'm as surprised as everyone else. Kyle Shanahan falling flat on his face in a big game with more weapons than the U.S. military? <laughs> I, 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 I'm shocked. I really am. I, it's almost like I've never seen this happen before. Uh, but in all seriousness, <laughs> <laughs> honestly... This is such a this to me is such a Kyle Shanahan moment where you have mm. a guy like Brock Purdy who is in the MVP race suddenly is in the midst of throwing three interceptions on his first four drives clearly amped up game's too big for him uh, and you have another MVP candidate in the backfield mm-hmm. who can help you to calm everything down yeah right uh, yeah. This to me makes no sense. So it, it's I read this. This is I read this in an article from uh, Sports Illustrated this morning. It mm. said uh, <clears throat> after all that, you got Brock Purdy throwing interceptions. You got Christian McCaffrey in the backfield. It says instead, Kyle Shanahan called sixteen passes and only seven runs in the first four series of the game, despite the 49ers defense giving up only ten points at that point in the game. Right. So it's not like the game had gotten away with him and you got to start chucking the ball downfield. He had every opportunity to run. He had the best running back in the NFL and Shanahan decided to let five to 10. They had five points. Yeah. And Shanahan decided to let Purdy throw the game away. Uh, And this reporter who was there at the game said after the game, I asked Kyle Shanahan about Mm -hmm. that decision. Oh, and his question, his question was, The play calling was very aggressive. Was that your plan coming out into the first quarter to Mm -hmm. attack with the pass like that? And Shanahan said, no, it was to be balanced. It was just how it came out. I saw that. I like how nasty you made him say it, but I, I I don't, he probably didn't say it like that. No, he didn't say it like that. He definitely didn't say it like that. (laughs) Now, I love your Shanahan hate. It's fantastic. It was just how it came out. To me, now I know that sounds like a throwaway line, but to me, that line, it was just how it came out. This is the origin of my Shanahan hate. Mm. This is the essence. This is like if you could boil it down into a thick, pasty, like essence, it's right there. It's in the big moments when you're in a big game. And everything is on the line. He just cannot get out of his own way. He can't He's do it. He's going to have to, man. He's got to figure it out. It, he, it, this is like, it, it was just how it came out. It's evidence that he stops using his brain and he starts operating purely on ego. Mm-hmm. If, uh, in that Playmakers thing, I know you don't ever want to hear it, but in that Playmakers uh, podcast series, they talk about, like the the wanting to one up and and the ego and how that can just take over. He says it uh, about the Super Bowl too. Yeah, and it, we don't it, it's in, <clears throat> it's a very interesting exclamation point that this this guy put on it. So the rest of the quote was Shanahan said, "We finished with a pick and stuff," which he's mm-hmm. trying to like he act like that's not important and stuff. Yeah. So we didn't make a conscious decision. We're going to come out throwing. It was some of the looks we had and felt we were moving the ball pretty good at it, to which the reporter ends his article by saying, Shanahan is right. The 49ers did move the ball when they passed in the first half, but they also moved the ball when they ran, and McCaffrey didn't turn the ball over, but Purdy did four times. So you keep asking me why is this Kyle Shanahan's fault, and and you're like, you know, people are like, oh, you're being too hard on Shanahan. I'm telling you, every time he comes to a game like this, he's going to fucking stick his dick in the dirt. Uh, and and we talked about this privately over the phone yesterday. Mm-hmm. 
like when you start talking about the MVP race and you think, you know, people are saying like, oh, Brock Purdy's the MVP. And then you have people say, yeah, but he's got all these weapons and da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. look at what Lamar Jackson is doing <laughs> with what is clearly an inferior roster. Yeah. When you, if you hold up the Ravens roster to the 49ers roster, I don't think you can objectively argue that Lamar is playing with the same bag that Purdy's playing with. You know and what I mean? If I, and if you put on the defensive coordinator hat, I send you a mm. defensive coordinator hat, you put it on, and you got to coordinate mm. a game, and you're coordinating against the San Francisco 49ers. Mm. By the time you get to planning for Brock Purdy, you've planned for three players already. Yeah. By the time you get to planning for Lamar Jackson, oh, no, that's the first one you're planning for. He's the 100%. most valuable player. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's you switch them on teams and the 49ers are the best team ever assembled. They're over here uh, breaking 2007 Patriots records. Yeah, and everyone's like is this the greatest team in NFL history? Exactly. It's not fair. Cheat code, how did they make that trade? Blah blah blah. It's not fair. But you put Brock Purdy on the Ravens and you got a middle of the pack team. <laughs> And to be fair, if you're sending out hats, the only hat I want is the one from the offensive coordinator of the Ravens, my man, former Bulldog, Todd Munkin, <laughs> who's out here fucking dealing. This guy, I yes. mean, yes. the game plan that this guy put together, now talk about balance, man. Um, you know, And no ego. Balance and no, no. ego. He's not trying to – because I was looking at it, and stat-wise, Lamar Jackson is not in the top ten in passing yards. Mm. But that's by design. Like exactly. that's by design. They're designed and they're designing him responsible runs. He's not running when he does run now. It's it's in the scheme. He's not running because the play broke down and some shit happened. He's running within the scheme, within the the parameters of the offense, and it makes him even better. And they don't and they use their running game because they're not chasing some MVP trophy, which he's probably going to deserve if they don't say McCaffrey or Tyreek, you know, mm. or one of these uh, high stat quarterbacks gets. Which I don't think they should. This is the year when McCaffrey or uh, Tyreek should get it, yeah. or not a non-quarterback. <clears throat> and the other, or, or Lamar well, Jackson. <laughs> yeah, like, I think Lamar has a good case. Because if um, you want, and if anybody out there is talking about Josh Allen, to to think Josh Allen should get it and not Lamar Jackson is ridiculous. How much? I have a question. How much do you think there was a big narrative going into this game? Uh, about the fact that the 49ers were favored by five and a half points. Um, And apparently there was a lot of ink spilled over the Ravens feeling like that was extremely disrespectful. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Josh Harbaugh said it in in a press conference. And uh, people were like, oh, he shouldn't have said that before the game. But they know. And I can tell you – well, I tell you who seemed – the most insulted by this was the Ravens' defense because mm-hmm. they were like five and a half points. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, uh-uh, uh, not At today. Home? Yeah, that's not happening. We're gonna. Yeah. It, it, I mean, my man, former Bulldog Roquan Smith. He he was he was in his feelings in the yeah. backfield. He didn't have any sacks, but he every time Purdy threw one of those picks, Roquan was in his grill, all up mm. in it. Um. Yeah. And what, who had all the picks? Was it Kyle Hamilton? Kyle Hamilton had two picks. Hamilton had two. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. They, the the <clears throat> they were yeah. enough to go around. They were enough to go around, man. Oh, right. Because Sam Darnold came in and threw a pick, too, didn't he? Marcus Williams got a pick. Kyle Sam, Dar- got, <laughs> Sam yeah. Darnold came Patrick into the Queen game. Patrick Queen got threw one. A pick. Shit. Marlon Humphrey. They were just going around, man. I forgot that Sam Darnold came in and threw a pick. Five total yeah. picks by the 49ers in this game. Four for Purdy, one for Sam Darnold. That's funny. Purdy, 18 for 32, 255 yards, no Ooh. touchdowns, four picks. God damn. And, it all, and, and unfortunately, look- it became about Purdy and not about the Ravens, man. It's a true. A complete good team, balanced team, threw the ball 35 times, ran the ball, what's that, 26 times. Mm. Looks good to me, man. Yeah. Smart. I mean and Zay Flowers, man, he looks good too, man. Jeez. What a what a delivery of what it, to me this was uh, Falcons winning on Christmas Eve was was almost as good a president 
as watching Shanahan fail on Christmas Day. Uh, the two of those things, the fact that those two things came on Christmas, I don't know. It's just a perfect Christmas. It's great. Nice. Well, let's get to the superlatives and then we'll get out of here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's so funny how much you love the failure of Kyle Shanahan. Hmm. Uh, my real MVP, I feel like there's only one answer to this question this week, and it's uh, Amari Cooper, man. Mm. And uh, he put his name in the record books, thus removing a name from the record books that I think doesn't deserve to have the honor of being in any record books. And that player is Josh Gordon. Mm. Mm -hmm. He's a prime example of a player that took his talent for granted and just wasted it all away. He had a chance after chance to turn things around and never got it right. He got hit for PEDs, substance abuse, and just kept fumbling everything away. Pun intended. Believe it or not, he has a Super Bowl ring that he won for the year the Pats won it all, but he didn't play that year because he was suspended at the time for violating his league's substance abuse policy. And he auctioned that ring off. He auctioned off his Super Bowl ring. Mm. I can't believe it, man. And I know people might get bothered about me bringing up someone with obvious addiction issues, but I counter that by saying you're in the NFL, you have all the resources right at your fingertips, take advantage of it. And meanwhile, on the other side of it, Amari Cooper, never been the fastest guy in the league, never been the biggest guy, but you could tell hard work and dedication got him to where he is. He couldn't afford to take his talent for granted like Josh Gordon did. He maximized his talent and he overachieved. He deserves to be in the record books after getting 265 yards receiving against Houston. Josh Gordon had 261. Well done, Amari Cooper. Mm. For that. You the real MVP. You're probably right. Amari Cooper is probably the one. <laughs> um, that being said, I'm going to roll with Puka Nakua, mm. who has been such a wonderful surprise in this 2023 NFL season. Um, but it's so much more than, than that because I feel like this man came out of nowhere and now he's in the midst of chasing history. Oh, how so? Rookie receiver receptions. Mm yards history okay now he's got a little more work to go he currently has 96 receptions on the year and he has 1327 receiving yards shit so for rookie uh receptions record he is in third place he -hmm. only has five more receptions to go before he catches anquan bolden I was going to say only, And he only has eight more receptions to go before he catches Jalen Waddell, who has the record with 104. Okay. I remember that. Yeah. <clears throat> now, for receiving yards, he's only got 50 more to go to catch Anquan Bolden, 73 more to go before he catches Justin Jefferson, 128 to go before he catches Jamar Chase, and 146 to go before he pit catches Bill Groman, who played in the <laughs> 1960s. I mean, 146. He had 164 in this game versus the Saints. This guy could break this record on Sunday mm. if they keep Hope throwing him the ball like this. Um, I just think that it. if we're going to – I had previously thought that um, – fucking uh stroud was probably going to win rookie mm. of the year i'm starting to think that you might want to give it to puka nakua <laughs> mm. yes. uh, because if you think about it like he like we all kind of had some expectations out of stroud like he was uh, before he even played a snap he's a potential rookie of the year candidate because it's just by sake that he's going to be a starting rookie quarterback. Puka mm-hmm. Nakua, we didn't even know this guy's name. This guy nope. came out of nowhere and he's been explain. If this guy breaks these fucking records, which I assume he will, I, my mm-hmm. vote, if I had one would go to Puka Nakua for rookie. Yeah. Of the year. It's like the, it's like the Brock Purdy thing. Mm. Mr. Relevant. Everybody's totally impressed. You the real MVP. Who's your trash for week 16? <laughs> 
You know what? I don't even have a long diatribe because I already kind of went into it. But for me, it's Kyle Shanahan. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to roll with Kyle Shanahan as my trash because it's like in a big spot. He does it time and time again. Uh, he outthinks himself. And when it's all over and the dust settles, he he can't take he 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 never takes accountability. It's it's always it's always something else, you know. Uh, I think Kyle Shanahan is the problem. I think the 49ers will continue to fail. I think they'll pick themselves up <laughs> and they'll win out for the rest of the season, probably just fine. But something like this is going to happen to them again in the playoffs. And I guarantee you, it'll be Kyle Shanahan's fault. You are trash! Well, for me, there's one player who's always heralded as the reason his team wins, and with good reason. I was shocked the other day that my wife didn't know that this player is considered the best player in the NFL by far. How little does she know about the sport? Have I failed as a husband? I digress. (laughs) On this day, however, the best player in the NFL can literally be seen as the sole reason his team lost. The Chiefs tried to outthink themselves this game. They did some fancy razzle-dazzle bullshit play that I'll show <laughs> that I'll show for yeah, all that of didn't you. Work. I'll show everybody as I talk about this. This razzle dazzle bullshit. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> and the big man, the thick six, as you like to call it. And then he followed it up by just throwing to the side, lobs it up. Jack Jones orders a pizza and then intercepts it <laughs> for a second pick six in a week. Just why are they doing this to themselves? I don't know. Uh, and then we got to see him as he does. Uh, Lately, go to the sidelines, yelling at people, throwing his helmet, generally being a bad sport. Mm. And it was the 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 game. It was only ten to seven after that first play, and then he makes it fourteen. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like it's not. It was not a good look, or seventeen to seven, or whatever. Seventeen to seven. I'm sorry, but. Uh, Mahomes had a temper tantrum on the sideline, and it seems to be his new thing. They lose the game despite the Raiders not scoring another offensive touchdown the entire game. They scored six (laughs) total points on offense. (laughs) As a matter of fact, the quarterback, Aiden O'Connell, the starting quarterback of the other team, threw for 62 yards. (laughs) It came down to turnovers, and Mahomes was responsible for each of them, and they both directly led to 14 points. I still think he's the best player in the NFL. There's no question about that. But for week 16, Patrick Mahomes. You are trash! And the attitude adds to that, man. Mm. Yeah. Uh, My shit got learned is kind of what you were saying, man. Kyle Shanahan just can't stop getting in his own way. I can't call him trash because I guess I could. I just called the best player in the league trash. I could have called one of the top coaches in the league trash. But I feel like deep down inside, he wants to be an NFL quarterback, Kyle Shanahan. Mm. I feel like it was a dream of his. And right now, he's living vicariously through his signal callers. And on mm. this night, he tried to force the game through Brock Purdy. And Brock just didn't have it. And four interceptions later, the Niners lose a game that I honestly think could have at least been closer. I thought Shanahan had learned his lesson after that game that we shall not mention. He even got to the big game again on his own and lost a late game lead where it looked like he was trying to prove that Jimmy G is that dude, and he is not. The 49ers have the best roster in the NFL, and they should be in the big game yet again. Kyle Shanahan just needs to stay out of his own way in order to get that victory that he so much wants to accomplish. Mm. What's your shit got learned? For my shit I learned, let's move on to a good quarterback. <laughs> a man who is sometimes discredited. But if you underestimate my man, former Bulldog, Matthew Stafford. I knew it. I knew this was coming. You, you underestimate this man, you do so at your peril. Let me tell you something about this man as the season winds to a close. In the clutch, throughout the month of December, Matthew Stafford is averaging nearly 330 passing yards per game. Wow. His touchdown-to-interception ratio is 10 touchdowns, 
and zero interceptions. Oof. Throw on top of that, the Rams have only lost one of their last six games, and that one loss was a walk-off punt return in overtime against the Ravens, who were the number one team in the AFC. These Rams have weapons coming out of their ears, and my man, former Bulldog Matthew Stafford, is delivering the ball to all corners of the field in ways that make your mind just explode the way the ball comes out of his hand. From this, I learned that the Rams will not only make the playoffs, but they will very likely send a top-seeded team home in the mm. first round and damn well might make the NFC championship game. And if the rest of the NFC fucks around, they might just find out that the Rams <laughs> are good enough to go all the way to the Super Bowl. Okay. Okay. I like it. That's, that's who, it. Who, that's all I'm saying. Who, who you putting spec on? <clears throat> For me this week, spec only belongs in one place. The Lions have won their division for the first time since 1993. Mm. Gone are the days where the Lions are that easy dub. Dan Campbell is more than biting kneecaps and talking Mm. about walking around with a lion on a chain, a big-ass chain. He's a legitimate coach with a shit ton of weapons and a style of leadership that has these guys ready to run through a wall week after week. He promised one day that he would change the culture in Detroit, and he has more than delivered. Taking a quarterback in Jared Goff that everyone thought was washed up, he found underrated talent in a dude like Amon Ross St. Brown, who if you want to know all the other dudes drafted before him, all you got to do is ask. He has that shit memorized. And this year, he got banged for uh, letting go of one of the best running back duos in the league, only to pick up David Montgomery and draft a rookie running back in the first round with Jameer Gibbs. And all they did was create one of the best one-two punches in the league, running motherfuckers over everywhere they go. The defense, still have a bit of a roller coaster, uh, but they always seem to step up when they need them to the most. Uh, The Dan Campbell Lions are here to stay, and they are here to grab a hold of you so that they can drag you out to the deep, dark abyss. Mm. And they're going to drown you. Put some respect on my name. <laughs> I'm putting some respect on Mason Rudolph. Let's go. I like that. <laughs> yeah, man, this guy's been sitting in permanent third string clipboard holder position for the past few years, calling in plays, knowing he can execute it better than motherfucking Mitch Trubisky and probably Kenny Pickett. Who knows, man? He's just sitting there like, I'm not, I don't have the contract. I'm going to just take my time. Eventually, they'll let me get in. And when they do let him get in, he leads his team to a victory over division rival and keeps playoff hopes alive and keeps the record alive of Mike Tomlin not having a losing record. And for that, you know, you got to tell Mason Rudolph to let the people know, man. What you going to tell him, Mason? Put some respect on my name. <laughs> That's a good one. He deserves that. Yeah, man. Scariest AFC team. I feel like it's got to be the Ravens. Yeah, got to be the Ravens for me, too. Scariest NFC team. I'm going to go with the Rams. I'm going to go with the Rams. Are you too? Are you really? (laughs) Yeah. The Rams are the scariest team. Nobody trying to see them boys. Detroit, they look beatable. They damn, they should have lost that game to the the Vikings if uh, Nick (laughs) Mullins didn't fall apart. Uh, uh, 49ers obviously beatable, and their coach is uh, having a a fucking meltdown or something. I don't know. He got to get that right. Who else is left over there? Seahawks? You know what I mean? Everybody, Eagles, everybody Eagles looks- are looking like almost everybody could beat the Eagles. The Jets did. Rams are the team that's coming together, peaking at the right time. Look out. Mm. If it's not Stefanski, then Sean McVay deserves a nod as coach of the year, too. Mm. I think this, right, this, this recent record with them having that only that one loss over the last like six games against the Ravens, just that has me thinking yeah. this is the team. Yeah. This is a team you don't want to play right now. That's the squad, man. All right, y'all. Well, we appreciate y'all. It's been a long one, but it's been a good one, man. Uh, That's it for us. We're going to be right back. We came in late this week, and we're coming in early for next week. So stay tuned. Get all your football stuff. We'll be back for predictions 
Uh, so stay tuned for that. It's been Jonathan Rollins. Excuse me, Zara. Whoops, been a bell. Peace. Later, y'all.